the recommended dose for a person to undergo the whole process of this detoxification. The toxins accumulate in the body, okay, in various cells, okay, at different organs, is a period of minimum six months. Why six months? Because this is a human body we are talking about. A very complex, beautifully structured but complicated machine. A machine nevertheless, but a biological, highly efficient organism. For that purpose, there has been accumulation of toxins. So the first thing we have to do is detoxification of all the accumulated toxins, as I said earlier, through the water, through the food, through the insecticides, the vegetables, the perfumes, the fats and so forth. The, the smoke, what we call secondhand smoke or passive smoking. So this takes about three to four weeks. Following the detoxification process, the second thing is now we have to make sure the cells in the body which are now very weak, they need to be replenished. Like a baby who has had diarrhea, loose motion, they have to be given intravenous fluids for increasing the energy levels, making sure you're giving the electrical balance. Like that, we make to make sure that these cells, they need to be replenished. That takes approximately about 35 days to 40 days. The next one where we have in this process is what we call regeneration. These cells which are now been strengthened or replenished, you know, has to be, has regenerated. That means they have to start regenerating new cells, healthy, productive, effectively functioning cells. Not cells which are weak, not cells which are mutant or which are damaged. The third process having been said, the fourth one we now like to make sure is detoxification, replenishment, regeneration. Having this done, then we go for what we call rejuvenation and regulation of all the various systems functions at the cellular level. How is this possible? Again, back to the basics, capillary microcirculation. When the, each cell in the human body is in harmony or homeostasis, collectively the cells function as a tissue. That tissue is working together at a higher level becomes what we call a organ. That organ functions with other organs to form a system. Example, we have the cardiovascular system, the heart, the capillaries and the veins and the arteries. We have the digestive system where we have the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, large intestine. We have the nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, the nerves. Similarly, we have the endocrine system. So for all the systems to work together harmoniously, then comes the individual organism. When all this from the cellular to the tissue to the systems to the organs, finally coming to the organism, we develop homeostasis, a person achieves good health.